We're testing the Federal HST in 40 Smith & Wesson 135 grain jacketed hollow point. Test platform is the Glock 23 4 inch barrel. We're using the SIM test media calibrated to ballistic gel specs plus four layers of denim. If you're just browsing the shelves for ammo and you see this box, you might actually take a pass on it because HST is not noted anywhere on the packaging. That's quite interesting. It also does not have the nickel plated brass that I typically expect, and you might as well, with the HST. That is a 9mm 147 grain there on the right, and that is definitely an HST. Another thing is the cost of this. I paid about $24, $25 for a box of 50 at Walmart, and Walmart's the only outlet that I have seen this ammo, and it's not consistent. This is the first box I've seen there in several months. So think about that. You're paying $24, $25 for a box of 50 rounds of defensive ammo, but for 20 of defensive ammo, you might pay anywhere from $19 to $24, $25. So your cost per bullet is a lot less, at least with this setup. I tested this, by the way, in May of 2010 in wet pack. That was using the Glock 22, which is a four and a half inch barrel. In that test, these chronographed five shot average at 1,152 feet per second. Here in the four inch barrel Glock 23 setup, a little bit less as would be expected. That is at 1,132 feet per second. And I think the advertised or rated velocity is 1,200 feet per second. I've also seen 1,250 posted on various websites, but I think the 1,200 makes more sense given the chronograph velocities we're coming up with these two different length test barrel. So what I expect is due to the light recoil nature of this, I mean this could certainly be loaded up to a much higher velocity than what it is given the weight. This is very much light for caliber in the 40 Smith & Wesson. I think we're going to have somewhat shallow penetration but tremendous expansion and let's just see how that hollow point cavity eats through four layers of denim. With this particular Glock in 40 or 357, because I can swap the barrel, with higher velocity loads, I'm coming in low and left, so I need to keep that in mind, but it's in the block, and this is going to make it much easier to locate. This is the left side of the track as I was cutting through the media. It's the one that's most complete and has the bullet in it. Point of entry here, 0.75 thereabouts. We're starting to see the expansion take effect. This cavity and this stress point, or these stress points rather, this runs for about two inches. I've seen larger cavities with 40 Smith & Wesson with heavier bullets. Okay, that's moving on there. Still going. Starting to settle down here, and that's about the seven inch mark. Working through the path, and then we get to the bullet itself, which is going to come in about ten and a quarter, ten and a half. So I was thinking it would be shallow compared to most loads. Let's take that out and get some final measurements. Penetration came out to 10.5 inches and as you can see we did catch a plug of denim with that hollow point cavity. There's one of your marks but the average is .680. I've rinsed out the media but we're still coming in at 135.5 grains. If you're looking for something in 40 caliber that is light recoiling, has good expansion properties, and holds together well even though it's not a bonded bullet, plus you're concerned that with heavier bullets you might have over penetration, this might be something to consider. However, with 10 and a half inches of penetration, that may not be enough. If that's the case, you still have a problem. Thanks for watching.